Despite being separated by thousands of miles and cultural differences, British punk and Japanese street culture share a rebellious spirit and an unapologetic approach to self-expression that has resonated for generations from the iconic punk fashion of the 1970s to the colorful and creative street styles of Tokyo's Harajuku district. We'll take a deep dive into that history and the influences that have shaped this dynamic cultural fusion. What's up everybody, I'm Reggie Casual, and join us as we explore the unique intersection of these two worlds and uncover the surprising connections that have made their mark on fashion and popular culture. This is WTH, and this is how UK punk dominated fashion in Japan. Let's get it. The connection between British punk and Japanese street culture began in the mid 1970s when British punk rock made its way to Japan, notably after the Sex Pistols Tokyo shows in 1977, which sparked widespread nonconformity and DIY ethos among Japanese youth. This emergence of British punk influenced artists, musicians, fashion designers contributing to the burgeoning punk movement in Japan. By 1978, the Japanese punk band The Stalin was blending punk rock with traditional Japanese elements, leading the Japanese punk movement. And the 80s saw the rise of the visual K style, merging punk fashion with glam rock and goth, epitomized by bands like X Japan and Bucktick. Now, the influence of British punk continued, with designer Vivian Westwood becoming a cultural icon in Japan and significantly influencing Japanese street fashion. And the 1990s saw the emergence of the Harajuku fashion scene, which many of you know, reflecting Japanese street culture, punk fashion, and elements from anime, manga, and traditional Japanese dress. But how did it all come to be? Well, that's a bit of a story. Much of Japanese consumption of British punk came through magazines, media, and music, movies like Stanley Kubrick's A Clockwork Orange, 1971, and Frank Rodham's Quadrophenia, 1979. They all became cult classics among Japanese punks and influenced their fashion and music. However, the biggest catalyst for Japan was, in fact, music. Punk music profoundly impacted Japan, inspiring bands like The Stalin, The Blue Hearts, The Strummers, who took cues from bands like The Sex Pistols, The Clash, and The Damned. And this legacy persists, inspiring new generations of Japanese musicians even today. Note, while it can be said that US punk movements also influenced Japanese street culture at this time, the undeniable fact is that much of British punk's influence in Japan is often underreported. So this exploration isn't to diminish the influence of America, but rather to amplify the influence of UK in Japan. And you'll see why momentarily. Let's get back to it. By the 1990s, Japanese music evolved, integrating pop and punk to create the unique J-pop genre, reflecting Japan's readiness to adopt new musical ideas. Japanese cinema also embraced British punk as shown in the 1982 film Burst City that spotlighted Japanese punk bands and incorporated punk aesthetics. Even as British punk waned in the late 1980s in its own country, no less, Japan remained captivated, evidenced by the popularity of the film Sid and Nancy and bands like the Michelle Gunn Elephant who cited The Clash as a significant influence. Japanese magazines like Bijin Hyaka and Fruits documented eclectic punk-influenced styles in Japanese youth culture, further demonstrating British punk's enduring influence on Japan. As such, these punk influences inevitably made its way into style and fashion. And fashion in Japan is as dynamic as it comes, world famous for its daring, non-conformity, and apparent quirkiness for the uninitiated. But how did a country known for its social conformity and the proverbial saying, deru kugi wa utareru, or the nail that sticks out gets hammered down, come to cultivate such a vibrant and diverse fashion scene. Despite these cultural norms, many Japanese youth managed to break free from these constraints and channel the country's rich artistic and cultural heritage into a fashion industry that is dynamic, daring, and renowned worldwide. The impact of British punk on Japanese street culture is just one example of how Japan has defied expectations and crafted something entirely unique and distinctive. While earlier periods such as the 1950s and 60s saw the influx of American styles and subcultures in Japan, it wasn't until the 1970s and 80s that Japanese fashion truly came into its own, heavily influenced by the nonconformity and DIY ethos of British punk. This movement marked a turning point in Japanese fashion, and one could argue that without the influence of British punk, the bold and innovative risks continually taken by those living in Tokyo, Osaka, Yokohama, and more might have been significantly less. The infusion of punk aesthetics paved the way for a new generation of Japanese designers who furthered the movements established by Japanese fashion legends like Rei Kabukubo, Yoji Yamamoto, Kansai Yamamoto, Issei Miyake, Yayoi Kusama, and Kenzo Takada. 
This can be seen in the second generation of Golden Age Japanese designers, like Jun Takahashi, who once formed the cover band, the Tokyo Sex Pistols, and used his interest in punk as the influential anchor for his label Undercover. Or Takahiro Miyashita, who went on to develop Number 9 and then The Soloist, both featuring unconventional silhouettes and distressed fabrics, heavily influenced by punk. Or Jinya Watanabe, who till this day experiments with punk aesthetics and DIY culture. And this extends all the way to Hiroshi Fujiwara, who established a large part of his understanding of Western street culture through the lens of UK punk aesthetics. In fact, one of the very first places he visited after winning a competition was London and studying from those in the UK, or at least observing. But it doesn't stop there. Labels like Black Memes, Facetasm, Sakai, and others embrace British punk's influence and street brand runners and artists like Shinsuke Takizawa, Takashi Murakami, Birdie, and even Nigo himself traced their roots to British punk. But it wasn't just about brands and designers in Japan. A large portion of the youth movement in the late 1970s and 80s embraced a holistic approach to fashion and style that remains one of the core elements of fashion in the country today. While not all individuals within the youth movement subscribed to this approach, it was significant in shaping Japanese fashion culture. It went beyond simply wearing branded clothing. It involves the search for individuality and elements that resonate with each person. Now, this quest for personal expression continues to thrive as seen in the abundance of secondhand shops that litter Japan's most notable fashion districts like Shimokitazawa and Koenji. All of it has strong connections to UK punk and its non-conformist ethos, which influenced and inspired the Japanese youth culture of that time and today. But amidst the rising tide of punk fashion in Japan, one name stood above the rest, Vivian Westwood, the rebel queen of British fashion who had already left an indelible mark on the punk movement in the UK. But as her designs made their way across the pond to Japan, they captivated a new generation of fashion lovers and helped to redefine the boundaries of style and self-expression in the land of the rising sun. The introduction of Vivian Westwood was a pivotal moment for Japanese fashion as she and Malcolm McLaurin, both influential figures in the British punk movement, brought punk aesthetics and DIY fashion to Japan. Westwood's provocative designs featuring tarred and bondage straps and bold slogans had a significant impact on Japanese fashion, influencing a generation of designers and helping to shape the country's unique style. The seditionaries and pirate collections by Vivian Westwood were embraced by Japanese youth culture and significantly influenced the punk-inspired fashion of the Harajuku district in the 1980s and 1990s. However, it wasn't just Westwood's designs that were appreciated. She also recognized Japan as a place where her designs could thrive and be appreciated. The Japanese fashion community was particularly receptive to her punk-inspired designs and willing to experiment with new and unconventional styles. This led to Westwood formally opening her first store outside of the UK in Japan in the 1980s, located in Tokyo. The store quickly became a hub for punk and subculture enthusiasts in the city and was one of the first moves by a British designer to Japan. The success of the store helped to establish Westwood as an influential figure in Japanese fashion and paved the way for other British designers and labels to find a following in Japan. And when the designer passed on December 29th of 2022, the impact could be felt in Japan among fans and admirers alike. However, her lasting words about Japan will forever acknowledge her love of the country and its people, stating, Japan has always been a very special place for me. The people, the culture, and the fashion are all incredibly inspiring, and I've always felt a strong connection to Japan and its creative spirit. My collaborations with Japanese designers and brands have been some of the most exciting and rewarding projects of my career, and I feel very fortunate to have such a close relationship with the Japanese fashion community. Since the introduction of punk in Japan, the country has played a significant role in embracing and more importantly, evolving the punk movement. This mindset of non-conformity and a quest for authenticity became deeply ingrained in Japanese youth culture. And as a result, when modern American cultural movements such as hip hop and streetwear emerged, Japanese youth were already primed to embrace their subversive and non-mainstream elements. The influence of the punk subculture created fertile ground for the Japanese people to interpret and infuse these movements with their own unique perspectives, resulting in a distinct Japanese interpretation of not only punk, but also hip hop, streetwear, and even designer fashion. Thus, the rebellious spirit of British punk, the subsequent subcultures it inspired in Japan, and the country's openness to modern Western subcultural movements are all interconnected. 
This dynamic illustrates a continuous thread of nonconformity and a desire to challenge societal norms that transcends borders and persists over time. Succinctly, the Japanese youth embrace punk in their own unique way, interpreting its aesthetics and values through the lens of their rich cultural heritage and unique sensibilities, which gave rise to a unique and dynamic subculture that continues to thrive and inspire new generations of creatives to push the boundaries of tradition and embrace the power of self-expression. As we come to an end of this episode of WTH, we hope that you've enjoyed taking this journey with us and learning more about this fascinating history and cultural exchange between these two worlds. If you'd like to continue exploring the intersection of fashion and culture with us, please consider subscribing to The Casual. By subscribing, you'll be the first to know about new episodes of WTH and other content that we're creating. Additionally, if you value the work that we're doing and would like to support us, please consider contributing to our Patreon, get overtime episodes, a whole bunch of other stuff. Your support will help us continue to create high quality content that explores the fascinating history and cultural connections that shape the world of fashion and beyond. Thank you for joining us on this journey and we look forward to sharing more with you in the future. And as always, keep it locked right here for all of your info in international fashion culture and business from Tokyo. It's your boy and keep it casual. And I will see you guys in a minute.